Hey guys, and welcome back to another Django tutorial. So in today's video, what we're going to be doing is just adding Bootstrap to our website and doing a little bit of styling. I'm going to show you guys how we can add some just nice looking classes and how you can kind of look through the Bootstrap documentation to find what you're looking for. So all we'll do is really just style a few different elements and make things look a bit nicer. And then I'm kind of going to leave the rest to you guys. So with that being said, let's get started. So I'm going to head over to the Bootstrap website and it actually gives you a really easy and quick way to get Bootstrap on your website. And all we're going to do to do this is just kind of follow this page. So first, let's talk a little bit about what Bootstrap is. So Bootstrap essentially is a uh, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery framework, which allows for you to add some custom built styling to your website. Now this uh, actual framework is built on what's known as a mobile first site framework or like, so it's meant for building responsive mobile websites that, and then they will expand to desktop applications. So apparently that is kind of the best way to do it now is to build stuff ideally for mobile because that is where most of the web traffic is nowadays. I believe I could be incorrect. Um, so you build it first for mobile and then you kind of expand it out into desktop. So anyways, uh, let's get started and use bootstrap. So what we're going to do is just follow this page. So the first thing we need to do is copy this uh, link here. So CSS and I'll leave the link to this page in the description if you want to do this as well. So I'm going to copy this uh, style sheet here and all this uh, all this is essentially is this kind of style sheet, but just online that we're going to access and be able to use. So it's served on what's known as a content delivery network, which means we don't actually have to download the style sheet. We can just copy this link in here at the bottom of our head tags, but just above the title. And we will start using this, uh, this style sheet on our website. Now that we've done that, there's a few other things we need to add. So let me go down here to the starter template and just copy a few things we're missing. The first thing I'm going to add is just these meta tags and these meta tags apparently are important. They just set up some properties for your website. So we'll put them below this link like that just to finding the uh, type of characters you're going to be using. And then I believe this is something to do with the mobile friendly kind of look or whatnot. So now that we've added that, uh, they might have to go above that. We'll add those above. We'll add this doc type HTML. So just exclamation point doc type HTML. We'll add that at the top of our file like that. Hit save. And I'm just going to move these meta tags to go above our link here. So our style sheet like that. Sweet. So now that we've added that, there's only one more thing, or I guess three more things actually that we need to add. And those would be these scripts. And these scripts are used by some of these CSS classes and to do a little bit of animation and just make things look a bit nicer, maybe move some components around the page. So we're going to add these at the bottom of our body tag. So underneath all of the content here. Now you don't necessarily need to add these scripts, but in some cases when you use certain CSS classes, they will require these and then things might look a little bit funky or things might be off. So anyways, now that we've added that, we're actually ready to start using Bootstrap. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of add some divs and some different classes into my main content block here. And I'll talk briefly about what they do, but really the way to understand this stuff is just to go to the bootstrap documentation. So for example, if I go here and just look at all the different components and kind of copy the stuff that you like that what it looks like and then customize it. So for example, if you wanted a large button, you would go to the buttons tab here for components. This link will be in the description as well. Uh, look at a button you like and then literally just copy the tag or the class for it and then you can customize it accordingly. So that's what I'm going to be doing for this kind of, and I'm just going to be copying some code that I've already written to style my website in a way that I think looks, I mean, decent. Okay. I haven't gone too far. I didn't take too long to do this. So anyways, let's add some divs here. So the first div I'm going to add is class equals in this case row and then justify and in this case content content and uh, center it like that, which just is going to mean that we're going to put this in the middle of our web page. Uh, so yeah, so we'll add that. And now what we'll do is we will add another div and this div, we're going to say class equals. And in this case, column eight, which is going to define what column space we're going to be in. We will end this div here and we'll add a few other things as well. So now I'm going to add an H one tag and this H one tag is actually going to be the header of my website. So inside of this tag, you're going to call it whatever your header you want. So I'm just going to say minus my site and I'm going to give this a class of in this case, we will say uh, MT hyphen two. 
Again, I'm just taking these from the Bootstrap website. If you don't know what this stuff means, you can either just look up the class and it'll show you the styling for it, or you can just go to the Bootstrap website and look for ones that you like. So in this case, I'm gonna do MT0, MB-4, and what this is gonna do is draw a little line for us underneath our header, just make things look a little bit nicer. So that's all I'm actually gonna add here for this main base template. Now let's go to our website and let's see how it looks. So this is what it looked like before. And just with those few adjustments, when I refresh the page, let's see how it looks now. Okay, so there we go. Um, so actually, so these little check buttons here shouldn't be here. One second, guys, just because I might not have saved a page because I was messing around with it before. Let me refresh this now. Uh, there we go. So that's uh, now what we're getting. Now it should be in the middle of the page, which is kind of throwing me off just a little bit. Uh, I spelt justify incorrectly, that would be why. So row justify content center. I knew I was doing something wrong there. So now let's refresh this. And there we go. Now we can see that it's moved to the middle of the page. And we have this line here obviously as well still. Sweet, so that's um, it for just styling the base template. So now that's gonna to apply to all of the web pages that we have. If I go to create for example, you can see that it applies to this as well. So now it is time to style some of the other pages that we have. So the first one I'm gonna style is this create page. So notice this is what it looks like now. Let's mess around with this now. What I'm gonna do is change some aspects of this form. So I'm gonna add a class here and I'm gonna say this class is form hyphen group. I'm just gonna put this create page into, uh, let's say like an H3 tag for right now, uh, just because I want it to be a little bit bigger on the page. I won't add any, uh, any styling to that. So now we'll add some divs inside of this. So the first div that I'm gonna have is just gonna be an input group. So I'm gonna say div, and in this case, class equals input hyphen group, in this case, mb hyphen three. And then I will end this uh, like this, I believe. I, this might be the correct place for it. I'm probably gonna have to mess around with these a little bit, but we'll see. I'm also just going to put this form instead of doing form.asp, I'm just going to get the name attribute from our form. So the way I do that is just by saying form.name. So rather than showing the entire form because we have that little check button, I'm just going to show the name text box because that's all I actually want for right now. So now what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to move this uh, underneath here, my apologies. And I'm going to add another div and this one is going to be class equals and in this case input hyphen group hyphen prepend now this is a really nice um div that they have here a class that they've made and what this does is well you guys will see in a second is it makes this button kind of mesh with this text input so they go they look at like in one line where it has the button and then it has the text input field right beside it but they're like combined together and it looks really nice you guys will see in a second how that looks now the last thing i'm going to do is just add a class to my actual button itself so I'm gonna say class equals in this case BTN and then BTN hyphen, uh, what was it? Uh, success, I believe. Yes, BTN hyphen success. And that might actually be it for all of my styling for this page. So let's go ahead and have a look now and see how this looks. If I run this, there we go. We get create page and now you can see what this prepend did. It took this button and it put it on the left side of my text input and notice that we get this little these little things coming up. This happens obviously because of uh, some of the JavaScript and stuff. We have please fill out this field. You can see that's there. If we go to create new, uh, we can see that pops up. With there's a hover for it. Like just all this nice stuff that Bootstrap does for us. Some of it's done by Django, but most of it's done by Bootstrap. Now let me go to view. So now it's time to make this one look a little bit nicer. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll wrap up the video here. So uh, this will be a little bit more tedious, but let's actually get rid of this kind of UL view and tags and stuff because I don't think we're gonna need to use these. Uh, yeah, so let's get rid of these ULs and let's get rid of these LIs because right last time we we're just using LIs to make them show up in a nice kind of group, but we'll use some, uh, some classes here from Bootstrap to do that for us. So we can uh, tab this back, so let me do that. Actually, I probably should just left it because I'm gonna have to put this inside a div. But anyways, inside of our for loop now, I'm gonna create a div. I'm gonna say this class is equal to, and in this case, input hyphen group, and then we'll do mb hyphen three. And then I'm gonna add a prepend in here as well because I wanna combine these checkboxes 
with um, what do you call it the text which will add in a cool way in a second so I'm gonna delete these texts right now and what I'm gonna do is add a prepend here so I'm gonna say div and in this case class equals and in this case what was it it was something like prepend input group hyphen prepend input group hyphen prepend let's tab these in we will end this div and we will end the other div as well just to make sure we don't forget like that so now what i'm going to do is outside of this this div but inside of the other one i'm going to add that text that i have back in so i need to actually get the item text I'm going to add this though in a weird way. I'm going to add this in an input box. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to say input. And in this case, we'll say type equals text. And then we'll simply just say value equals. And in this case, we'll say, uh, what was it? Item dot text like that. Now we'll add a class to this as well. We'll say class here equals. And in this case, form hyphen control and there we go now that's it for the kind of displaying the items so let's actually have a sneak peek of how this looks and see if i made any mistakes or not um okay so it's not ideally what we want it to look like but you can see we have these text box and then we have the check button so let me make sure i didn't make any critical errors here before i might have either misspelled something or forgot to add something ah so i've forgotten one class which was probably pretty important here <laughs> so we're gonna add another div and in this case we'll say div class and in this case equals input hyphen group hyphen text we'll end that div where is this div ending i believe right here and that should be good for that i don't want to say for sure but let's see there we go. So that's better. This is what I wanted. Now you can see we have the check buttons kind of showing up on a nice little color here. And then all of our items show up in text boxes. And I mean, you can actually edit the items. Uh, but when you save them, it's not gonna, it'll just go back to whatever you had. But I just wanted to do them in this way because it looks really nice. And now what's left to do is just modify these buttons here. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'll start by doing is adding a class or a div here. So I say div class equals and in this case, We'll say input hyphen group, in this case, MB hyphen three. I will tab all of these, I guess, except for, let's see which ones I actually want. I'm gonna put the save button, I think, on a different side. So let me put the save button down here and I'll tab these two in these add item. And I'm actually gonna do the same thing that I did with the creating a new to-do list in terms of that prepend thing with these items. So to do that, I'm gonna add another div in here. And in this case, I'll say div and then class equals, in this case, input group hyphen prepend. You guys can tell I like this, this prepend thing that you can do here. Uh, prepend, we will tab these in and then we will close these divs. So slash div and slash div, but I believe that I have to put this input actually right here. Uh, and that I think is correct. There we go. Sweet. So now all I need to do is add some classes to the button. So I'll add the same classes that I used on the other one. So I'll just say class equals in this case, BTN, BTN hyphen success. And I'll just copy this and we'll use this class down here as well, just to be consistent. So anyways, that should be it for styling. Let's have a look now. If I refresh, uh, continue. There we go. So now we get add item and we get save and things are just looking a lot nicer on our website. Obviously, there's a lot of work to be done, but take in, I did this in 13 minutes in a video or however long this video is and I've been kind of explaining things as I go but I'll quickly show you that if you want to look at the different components and see all of this different kind of stuff just go to the bootstrap documentation this is the link I'll put in the description go to components here and for example if you want to look at a nav bar and how this works then it'll explain to you how to create one and you can just really copy kind of however whatever you want from here if I go to for example buttons you can see all the different kind of buttons and how to make them and it just tells you what classes to use you use those classes and then it looks nice on your web page so anyways that has been it for this tutorial if you guys enjoyed please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and i will see you again in the next one